Hi guys, how are you? I hope everybody's having a good day today. Hey, I just wanted to talk to you about uh, doing a, a digital bullet journal. When I was for, if you don't know what a bullet journal is, um, I'm going to link you a video down below. Writer Carol made. He's the founder and the inventor of the bullet journal, and uh, I'll link that below so you can see what that is. But basically, to just do it in a nutshell, it's your it's like your planner, your to-do list, your calendar, goals, all of those things in, in one notebook, and it's usually handwritten. And for me, I like to write things out because that's how I remember, and that's how I, um, that's the right word, that's the act of writing helps me to remember the things that I need to do. Um, for a while, I kicked around the idea of maybe doing a traditional paper bullet journal, but... Um, I have, I think there are, yeah, there are three main reasons I want, I want to do a digital bullet journal. First and foremost, you know, I'm a digital scrapbooker and I have this big stash of digital supplies that I really want to use. So I'd like to find other uses for them besides just for scrapbooking. And the nice thing about this is once I have something that I like, I don't have to go out and buy it again because I can just use those digital elements over and over again, you know, like little tabs. Or little sticky notes, or uh, labels, or whatever they are, I can I can keep using those over and over. And the other thing about it is, I think that I'd have trouble remembering um, to carry a paper journal around with me. Um, I'm just so used now to either carrying my iPad or my phone that it makes more sense for me to have my journal on a digital device. And um, books can also get a little bit clunky and bulky, so I think for me this is going to be a little more convenient. And uh, this also, doing this on my iPad, which is where I have my bullet journal, is also going to be cheaper for me in the long run. I, I already have the iPad and I have my Apple Pencil, so I might as well find a way to make that work. Um, and I, as I've gone through and done my research about bullet journaling, and I've looked at the, there's, there's two main um, books that I see people use. I mean, you can use whatever. You can just use a spiral-bound notebook. But what's popular to use right now is the Leuchtschirm. I think that's how you say it. The Leuchtturm journals that are the official bullet journal um, and, or the moleskin journals. And each of those will cost you about $15 to $19 just for one book. And since most people go through like somewhere between, anywhere between two to five journals, and sometimes it can be, some people use more, some people might use less, but that's an average I would say. That's um, that's about 45 to 60 bucks a year just for the journals, not including the pens and the stickers and everything else. And I know that's not a lot of money, but for me, I just, I'd rather use an app um, because the app I chose cost me about $3. It costs for a subscription, it'll be about $3 a year for this app. And I think that'll just work really um, a lot better for me. So um, I like, what I found out in my bullet journal is if you want another section or you don't have enough spa space on the page you've just done, you can turn the page and just start writing on it. And you can have a whole page or just part of one. It just You can really customize this to make it what you want it to be. So, and then the other thing, I kind of wanted to have that balance between doing a strictly digital thing and being able to write in it, to have my own handwriting in it. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people using digital, they, they use, they've used various apps like um, Microsoft OneNote or, you know, other digital planner apps and they're, they're just typing in there with fonts, which if that's what they want to do, that is great. But I think the appeal to me of using a bullet journal is being able to include my, my handwriting and my hand doodling if I want to. Um, well, I was going through I this, I, w I was looking around at the various apps. I found one really cute planner um, program, and, but it was $45 just to get started, and then that didn't include a lot of the inserts in the pages. And for me, I just thought that was really expensive. So um, then I started looking at different Apple, uh, the iOS apps that you can find in the App Store. And so I looked at three different ones. I looked, um, there was Notability, and then Evernote has one called Pen, 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 Pen Amulet, Pen, um, Pen Ultimate, sorry, Pen Ultimate. And then I also looked at, um, what was the other one, sorry, Notes Plus. Now, I liked those because 
there were things I liked about all these apps. Um, I really liked that I could use my Apple Pencil and put my writing, you know, right onto it, just like I was writing a piece of paper or something. But the, um, and I eventually did end up trying to use Notability. And I'll try and put you guys a picture of that up on the screen so you can kind of see what it looked like. But while there were things I liked about all three of those apps, the thing that really bummed me out is that I couldn't put them together in a booklet or make the pages look like a booklet or anything like that. Each page was its own separate document. And to go into, um, if I say if I'm on my index page for my bullet journal and I want to go over to my, my gratitude log, I have to, I'm, instead of turning pages in a book, I'm just going between all these separate documents. And it was okay. I mean, it wasn't horrible or anything, but I wanted something that really had the cohesive feel of a book that I could kind of open and close. Um, and yeah, something that I could use with my Apple Pencil. And um, none, of these, none of these apps really felt like I was flipping through a journal. <clears throat> so what I did was I went back to the App Store and I started searching around for journal apps. And the one that I found was is called Morfolio Journal. Now you need to distinguish between this and the other apps in the Morfolio library, I guess you could say, because they have Morfolio has one called Journal, there's one called Crit, another one called Trace, and they're not exactly the same. So make sure if, if you're interested in looking at this one, you look for Morfolio Journal. And I will give you a, a link to that one so you can find um, find out about it. But <clears throat> this app is nice. It's free to download. You do have to pay a $3 per year subscription to use your journal so that will, um, your, all your stuff will be saved and, um, you know, to be backed up and, and things like that. But again, $3 a year is still cheaper than the 46 to 50 plus you'd be spending if you had paper supplies. So I thought this was a really good deal for it. Um, yes. It has a black leather looking cover, which is cool. And if you, um, you can flip through the pages really, really fast if you want. So it feels like you're actually in a book. Uh, the thing I like about it is that it has eight pens. And um, there's like a marker pen, a calligraphy pen, a regular writing pen. There's an eraser in there and a few other um, things like that. And you can, use, um, you can use your Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro. Or if you just have a regular iPad, you can use any stylus that you know will work with it. I'll try to get you guys like um, a link to a list of some of those other ones that work with with the other iPads. Or um, if you the have thing that's nice about it, you can even use your finger to write and to draw stuff with if you want to. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that really because you're not going to get really crisp, fine lines. But if you want to do that, you don't even have to have a stylus or an iPad Pro. Okay, so you don't have to have an Apple Pencil and an iPad Pro. They're just nice. Um, there's other ways to definitely use this app. The other thing I like about this is that um, there's not a limit on the number of pages that you can put in one single journal. It's not like a, a real paper journal that we eventually will get full. You add as many pages as you want uh, to this journal until you're done with it. Um, the other thing that's nice is, um, I'll show you in the demo in a little bit, is that there is a ruler, a little digital ruler inside this app that can, that can assist you in, in creating nice straight lines if you want them. And then as soon as you want it to go away, you just tap the ruler button again and it's gone and it's out of your way. But it's so nice not to have to take a ruler along with you, to have just have that functionality. Um, it also has fun paper choices. In a lot of bullet journals, um, people are either using the dot grid paper or a graph paper type look, or there's other ones in there too. There's just regular lines, regular notebook lines that way. It also has several color palettes. In it, I can't remember the exact number, but say you're looking for a certain shade of pink, um, you wouldn't have too much trouble finding it. Program. One of them is that there's not like a really good brush pen type of uh, pen or tip in there. Like when you go to use it with your Apple Pencil, they have a paintbrush looking tip, but it paints really big swaths of paint. And so what I did was I put in a request to more, the Morfolio Journal, Journal App Support and asked them if they could please ask, add like a Tombow type a tumble brush marker type thing into the, um, the selection of pens because that would make it really fun to do like they have brush lettering that's really popular right now so that's one thing that's kind of a bummer is you can't do that because they don't have the right a uh, pen like that in their tool set um, the, you can import pictures into this program and use them one thing that I found that I 
was kind of hard was just that if you want to crop a picture, it has to be, I couldn't find another way to do it except to go to, um, they have a, a button you can push to get something from the web off of the, off of, off of the internet and into the app. The only place you can crop it is in that um, box that comes up when you want to download something from the internet. And in there you have the chance to crop the photo. But if you take the photo, and either from your photo library or um, somewhere else, and you put it onto the document, you can make it bigger and smaller by pinching and zooming, but you can't crop the picture down from that point. So um, hopefully that's something that they'll improve upon and they'll change. Um, so anyways, guys, that's, um, that's kind of the informational part of the video and kind of just what I wanted to tell you about um, how I'm, what the app and how I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I use the, how I've used my Morfolio journal and maybe give you a little flip through some of the pages. Um, and just, um, I, I hope that you uh, will find the, the demonstration of me working in the Morfolio journal helpful. Hey guys, so here's what those some of those coloring palettes look like. I'm going to go ahead and pick a pink from one of the palettes. And here's the ruler that's up in the toolbar at the top. I just clicked on the ruler, and I'm using the ruler to help me draw straight lines as I fill in things from the Habit Tracker, which um, the Habit Tracker is from the Boho Berry website, which I'll link to you below. The calendar on the left I drew myself. Um, and then I went ahead and did this weekly spread, and uh, for Saturday... I'm going ahead and adding in some events we have um, and I'm getting close up so you can see my writing and then here's a, um, a larger view of what my spread looks like and this is all that I've all the things that I've created in here with mostly my Apple pencil so now I'm going to take some washi tapes from my digital stash I mentioned I would do this earlier so what I'm going to do is I went and to the web I put my washi tape in a folder on my Dropbox and I'm cropping it down you can see I'm getting rid of that left edge so that when I put my washi tape in my bullet journal that it'll look like it's been uh, trimmed with a pair of scissors and then I'm going to use my first and second fingers on my hand to pinch and zoom and resize this little washi tape and get it into the spot that I need it. Then I'm going to go back to Dropbox here in a second and I'm going to repeat the process with a, you see I went to the web, this little black tape that I got, that's a quatrefoil pattern. I went ahead and did the same thing and now I'm going to go over to my gratitude log and you can see that empty space there. And what I want to do is put something in there so I'm going to switch over here um, and show you, um, instead of a screen record, I'm going to show you the camera right above my head. Um, recording right above me and I'm sorry this is kind of dark but you can see the pages really well so what I'm just gonna do here now is just create a, um, a rectangular box and I'm gonna put a quote in there and you can see this little journal this little sorry not the journal this ruler is coming in handy so after I got my box drawn on the outside I'm doing some inner lines to kind of create a frame for my quote so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that out here just going around all sides when I've got my frame done I'm going to start I got a, a pin there and I'm going to start embellishing this making some little corner marks there to make it look like a frame that's been glued together more or less and then um, I'm going to start working on this decorating the frame so I what I'm going to do is put a curvy swirly line on each sides of the frame and then I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to go back to the color palettes and I'm going to go to the comic art one and there's that aqua color. It kind of, it's more like a teal color in real life. It looks kind of funny on the screen, but I'm just going to start drawing some stripes to embellish these, these little curvy, curvy lines that I've created here. Um, just for some visual interest and I sometimes get tired of just the black, so I'm adding in a color. So I'm going to go ahead and um, finish drawing all these little stripes and then eventually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start writing in a quote I found on the internet and I'm what I'm putting here is there is always something to be thankful for and you can see I'm just writing this out trying to be careful lifting my pen when I can to make sure I have nice even letters so what I'm doing is just creating the word always here in cursive and then after I've written that out, I'm going to go and thicken the downstrokes, which basically, like I mentioned in another video, basically just means that every time I pull down with my pen to write these letters, I'm going to go around those, those portions where I pulled down and thicken them up by drawing some extra lines and then coloring them in. So that's what I'm doing 
right now I've thickened my A and then I'm going to follow suit with the rest of the letters and then um, what I'm going to do after that after I get all my letters thickened is I'm just going to start and um, I'm just going to start coloring those in and making them nice and black and thick so uh that's what we're doing right now just making everything look dark and thick and nice and then we're going to just keep going and after the word always I'm going to go ahead and letter the word something and I'm going to do that in kind of tall and skinny letters and when I get done with this one I'm just going to put a rectangular box around this word just so that your eye is drawn there when you're reading the quote. And then um, you're not going to see the next part where I I forgot to include this in the video, but I wrote the words to and be right, um, right next to something in cursive. And I used pretty much the same method as I did with always, but I just didn't thicken the downstrokes. And then I'm going to write the word grateful. I think I said the word thankful, but actually this quote has the word grateful. And I'm going to do it kind of in a print lettering with a thick left side. I, I've watched Kara at Boho Berry um, do this and it's really cool and if you want to see her do it I will link her channel below. I'm gonna go ahead and finish those letters here. Uh, let's see and then I'm going to go and write the word for in cursive much the same way as I write the other ones and I'll go ahead and think of the downstroke and you can see I messed up my R so I went back and fixed it which is a nice thing because if you if you are writing on paper you don't have that option so I created a couple of flourishes on either side of the word for and now I'm gonna go ahead and thicken the downstrokes of those letters and color them in just like I did with the word always and let's see where are we at now okay so now I'm gonna take that same teal aqua color that I used to make my stripes and I'm gonna color in the thicker parts of the word grateful and I find that just adding this little bit of this little pop of color really makes your bullet journal pages look really nice and finished. I just love the way that it looks. So I'm finishing coloring in my my last letter L there, and then I'm gonna go back to the color palette and I grab that same aqua color and I'm just gonna make a, a tiny little hairline with a pencil. Uh, with the little pencil that's in the set and there's the finished page here are some other pictures I put of other of the of this page the grateful log the gratitude log and then some others that I created the left side of this one I made and then the right side of the calendar is I got from Etsy which I'll give you a link for my January memories and then there is the weekly spread all right guys thanks for watching we'll talk to you later thanks bye